Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at an example of applying the integral test where it's not obvious that our function is decreasing. So first we have our infinite series with term n times e to the negative n squared. And we can easily translate that into the improper integral where the function of x is x times e to the negative x squared. Now, always check your three conditions or verify them. The first, this function is continuous. And the reasons for that, this function is built out of a combination of continuous functions. x, the exponential function, and x squared are all continuous. So this combination of products and composites is continuous. So that's satisfied. The next condition is we need the function to be positive, but on our interval from one to infinity, x is always positive and exponential functions are always positive for any value of x. A positive times a positive is positive. So this whole function is positive on that interval one to infinity. What we need to check and verify, because it's certainly not obvious, at least myself and other professors would want you to provide some work, that this actually is decreasing. So how do we verify that? This is where your fundamentals from calculus one kick in to show that a function is decreasing on an interval. We want to show that its first derivative is negative. So before we go any further, we need to verify that all three conditions are met we need to check the decreasing condition. So let's go ahead and calculate the derivative of this function and see where the derivative is negative. So let's call this function f of x, x times e to the negative x squared. We're gonna calculate the first derivative using the product rule and the chain rule since we have negative x squared inside the exponential function. All right, so let's go ahead and apply the product rule, differentiate the first function, you'll get the derivative of x is one. Keep the second function the same. And now we add to that, keep the first function the same, but differentiate the second function. That's where the chain rule comes in. The derivative of the inside, negative x squared, is negative two x. And we multiply that by that exponential function. All right, this we can simplify a little bit. Notice I can multiply these two terms here, x and negative two x, and I can factor e to the negative x squared out from both. So I'm gonna write the derivative here as one minus two x squared times e to the negative x squared. And what we're going to notice is the interval that we're interested in the interval in our improper integral from one to infinity, as soon as x is one or bigger, this term two x squared, that's gonna be bigger than one. So in other words, you're subtracting from one, a number that's bigger. This is definitely going to be negative when x is greater than or equal to one. And we know exponential functions are always positive. So what we can conclude here is this is going to be negative when x is greater than or equal to one. And what this tells us, since now the derivative is negative on that interval, that means this function is decreasing. So in other words, f of x given as x times e to the negative x squared, we're gonna say that is decreasing. On the interval from one to infinity. So we have verified that the decreasing condition is satisfied. Now we can go ahead and apply the integral test. Next up, we're gonna go through step-by-step step how to evaluate this improper integral and determine if it converges or diverges. At this point, you should probably know what to do. We're gonna replace the infinity 
with a variable t and then take a limit as t approaches infinity. So first, let's do the setup. A limit as t approaches infinity. And then our integral goes from 1 to t. And everything else remains the same. Now we turn our attention to evaluating the integral, which is from 1 to t. And it looks like we can do this with a basic substitution. I'm going to recognize that when I differentiate x squared, the derivative gives me a factor of x. So let's choose as our u negative x squared. We'll calculate the differential. It comes out to negative 2x dx. And since we're missing a factor of negative 2 there, let me divide that over, negative 1 half du equals x dx. And one thing that I always do, you might not, but since we're doing a substitution with a definite integral, I'm going to use my substitution to change or convert the limits. So our original variable is x. We're going to convert that to new limits for u. x goes from 1 to t. And now we just basically plug that in to u. So if x is 1, looks like we get u as negative 1. And when you plug in x as t, we get negative t squared. All right, now we can convert from x to u. We have the integral from now negative 1 to negative t squared. We have a factor of negative 1 half from the differential. And we're just left with now e to the u as our function of u. All right, looks like that has a basic antiderivative, which is just e to the u. The negative 1 half just stays. And we're going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluating that at u equals negative 1 and negative t squared. If you didn't convert your limits, make sure you back substitute u as your substitution, and then you would use your original limits for x, 1 to t. All right, so at this point, we're just going to plug in. Be careful with your signs. Looks like we get negative 1 half now e to the negative t squared. And then minus negative 1 half e to the negative 1. And you can clean this up a little bit. The two negatives cancel. And I'm going to bring that out front to write this as positive 1 half times e to the negative 1 minus 1 half e to the negative t squared. All right, that is the value for our integral. Now we can take the limit of that as t approaches infinity. So our limit here, t approaches infinity. And then we're taking the limit of this expression, 1 half e to the negative 1 minus 1 half e to the negative t squared. And just be careful, sometimes you have to apply L'Hopital's rule. This term here, as t approaches infinity, that's not giving you an indeterminate form. That is a decreasing exponential function. If it's easier for you to see, rewrite that as 1 over e to the t squared. And now your denominator is going to get really big as t approaches infinity. 1 over a big number should be small. As t approaches infinity, that exponential, or decreasing exponential rather, that's going to approach zero. So it looks like what we find here is that the limit of this expression as t approaches infinity is 1 half times e to the negative 1. That limit exists, which means the improper integral here is convergent. And remember what the integral test says. 
your improper integral and the infinite series do the same thing. So since our improper integral is convergent, this infinite series is also convergent by the integral test. All right, this one required a little bit more work because we had to verify first that the function f here was decreasing. But with that out of the way, checking the derivative, this is a good problem. It involves a lot of fundamentals from calculus two. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe.